Heat issues are more detrimental to people than natural disasters. Temperatures are higher. That causes those respiratory illnesses, the heat exhaustion and stroke. And we've been noticing with these urban heat islands is it makes it more uh, easy for thunderstorms to develop during the summertime. We'll see a lot of the issues that cause heat island effect on the street, um, as we did identify in our report. It's one of the hottest areas, and you'll see there are very few trees. Um, and we're working to amend that, but for right now, this is where we are. I want to take you over here to the snow because we're talking about urban heat mapping, mm -hmm. but really this encompasses all seasons. And this is a great depiction of how asphalt versus park space or green space. So talk to me about the difference we're seeing here. Well, you don't see any snow here, right? So this is already melted off. Um, and we still have snow over here, which would be sort of more of a natural balance of how this should be being processed and soaked in slowly, being absorbed, doesn't cause any stormwater runoff. So this is a great example of why we want more green space. In August of 2020, the City of Roanoke and Climate Adaptation Planning Analytics partnered together to create a heat map of the city. Volunteers collected data by car and bicycle. The data collected showed a temperature variation of more than 15 degrees. Urban heat island effect is what happens when you start to develop areas, uh, particularly with asphalt and streets and roads and buildings that actually absorb heat and then release it into the atmosphere. They can be up to 15 degrees hotter from a shady street to a area much like we're in now where there's a lot of development and very little green space. Temperatures are higher and you know that causes those respiratory illnesses, the heat exhaustion and stroke. And then something else that we've been noticing with these urban heat islands is it makes it more uh, easy for thunderstorms to develop during the summertime. And thunderstorms sitting over a big city can uh, cause flooding events. And we're here at Raleigh Court Park uh, here in Roanoke. And uh, really f interesting to watch as we look out to all the snow, the snow has maybe stuck around for a couple days versus right in downtown Roanoke where it's a little bit hotter. A lot of the snow is already gone. So you can kind of see that even during the winter time, the urban heat island is still a thing. So this is one of the nicer areas of Roanoke. People love to live here. This is called the Grandin Village Raleigh Court area. And it's really walkable. People bike here all the time. You see runners here running all the time. This is going to be an area where it's one of the cooler spots. So when you look at the heat map, it's in the blue tones. There tends to be, you know, um, a lot of community housing, old streets, very few parks abandon uh, shopping malls, things along those lines. So all those things would add to that urban heat island. And then these are also in the, our community, people that often don't have air conditioning and uh, find that the heat gets so much worse in their homes because they have poor insulation and also no air conditioning. So when you look over behind us even, or in front of us right there, you see just the strip. So you have to have strips to divide the parking lot. So if you can make them green, right. better. Right, you often see that in parking lots. And again, given the day that this was built, this wasn't an uncommon concept. Um, and I think we've gotten a little bit better about that in some of our newer developments. But you're right, some strips with the trees to help cool the parking lot. Even parking surfaces can be helpful, you know, if you don't have the opportunity to put trees up, you know, to cover some of that uh, land. What kinds of things would you add to make it better? 
Well, we have some trees over here, so more trees would be a good thing. Any kind of shading actually would be helpful. Um, also, there's a type of surface that's called a pervious surface. So it would look like this, but it might just be a little more porous and you'd see more openings to allow the water to go through. But not only does the water go through it, it breaks up that hard surface so that it doesn't have such um, an intense heat escalation and helps to uh, slow that process as well. So they just put this bike lane in, less pollution, because more people are using alternative methods of transportation. So they might be biking to work or they might be biking for exercise until, or biking to the gym instead of driving to the gym. So I think, you know, unless you have those things, people won't necessarily use them. So the city of Roanoke put up these great explainers because I think green roofs are, are pretty new. A lot of people don't know about them, and especially if you've been coming down here for a long time, um, you may be like, what is this? And so thanks to green roofs, it's possible to restore some of the natural ecology even in the heart of the city. And here's where the urban heat island effect comes in. It reduces that in which hard surfaces absorb and radiate heat back into the atmosphere, resulting in higher temperatures in urban settings. So if you were able to replicate this in multiple places downtown where we are seeing some urban heat, then ideally the temperature would start coming down if we had more green roofs like this. Back to the neighborhoods where urban heat is an issue. So, you know, this is, neighborhood is a perfect example. We have a lot of houses that are 100 years old, even a little bit older. Those houses didn't have insulation in the walls, still don't, don't have insulation in the roofs, have leaky windows. Um, you know, they weren't really built for air conditioning, but they, in many cases, don't have air conditioning or just have a single room air conditioner. They just really aren't built for the way things are now. So HUD has a program called Healthy Homes. Green and Healthy Homes goes a little bit further and what we do is we try and leverage different free services that would be available to low income homeowners to sort of look to see what other services could we provide for them that would maximize their benefit in the least invasive way. So this house is one of those houses. What are some of the limitations of fixing the problem? Because it sounds like, you know, a lot of those take money, a lot of those take time. A, a big thing is, like I mentioned, with the poorer communities, they can't afford to upgrade their air conditioning, their house, make it energy efficient, make it easier for them to cool themselves down. Um, and something that the city told us is a lot of Roanoke's already built out and they can't, you know, tear things down to put new things in because there's just nowhere for anything to go. And how do we go about fixing urban heat islands. So a big thing that we can do is increase the green spaces like here at Raleigh Court Park and we can plant trees downtown, we can um, whitewash the asphalt, we can, um, we can change the roofing on some of these buildings, make it white, make it green, things like that. There's a couple of things. If you're in the position where you're ready to replace your roof, a lighter roof is a better roof. A green roof is an awesome thing. Um, that's not something everybody can do, but you know, that's probably the best roof of all. Um, you know, again, those porous surfaces as opposed to the hard surfaces. So, you know, sometimes a gravel or a paver driveway is better than an asphalt driveway or a concrete driveway. Um, anything you can do to promote shade, promote green space are all good things to do. My job has been completely dedicated to sustainability for 20 years. Um, and the difference in the public attitude and understanding and comprehension of what it is we're talking about is amazing. It's really rewarding. And I feel like the next generation is just that much further ahead of us. So I'm super excited about our future. I feel really good about it. Um, you know, some people are never going to agree and that's okay. They don't really have to. Um, everybody's entitled to their opinion, but you know, there's also a bigger picture that we all need to be aware of. And um, I think our youth are gonna, that's gonna be more important to them even than it has been to like my generation. 
We'd like to hear what you think about the topic. Leave us a comment below. And be sure to subscribe to our Solutionaries channel. We're just getting started.